Hey, hey Ash. Oh. Well, I just thought I'd switch it up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> um, hey, guys. You know what? What? We survived. We survived. Barely by the t- t- what is skin it? of our skin of chin, our chin chin skin of our the hairs of our no Why skin of our teeth. Say teeth. It is. Skin Does that of make teeth. sense? What does that mean? I was doing a little through a little skin of our thing. teeth. I don't know. I don't understand that phrase now that I'm. I feel like this is the first time I've heard that phrase and it's like sitting. I'm like hearing it for the first time. Are you though? No, I'm not. <laughs> Is hiring challenging? Yes. Do you love a challenge? Also, yes. You need a hiring partner that can help you rise to the challenge. You need Indeed. If you guys don't know, Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash unsolicited offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash unsolicited. Just go to indeed.com slash unsolicited and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash unsolicited terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed so obviously creating visual content is an essential part of what me and taryn do not only here on the podcast but as a job on socials but the creative process has not always been easy ever since taryn and i discovered canva for teams life has gotten so much easier here for our team at unsolicited advice canva for teams is a design platform that makes it easy for anyone to create stunning content in any format from social media posts to videos presentations and websites the endless templates and premium fonts, photos, graphics, and videos add personality and edge to our team's content. So collaborate with Canva for Teams. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you go to canva.me slash advice. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash advice, A-D-V-I-C-E, for a free 45-day extended trial. Canva.me slash advice. know man but what i do know is that we are we are not going to be scared today well speak for yourself because i still i still every time i go to bed i've been having to keep the light on lately oh i thought you meant like you coming back from no well that's different i mean we're not going to be scared today by our content correct no new fresh scaredness just i was like perpetual why did you bring a scary story perpetually afraid yeah because of this last month yeah. It's probably going to take me a month to shake it off, realistically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, for my fun fact, I thought I'd do a fact about what fear does to your body so that we oh. all can just feel uh, validated mm-hmm. for the fact that, like, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we struggled. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you know that when you're afraid, you get stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline and your blood pressure and heart rate increases... Mm-hmm. You start breathing faster. Even your blood flow in your body changes, and it flows away from your heart into your limbs, making it easier for you to do yeah. what you got to do. Flooded with adrenaline. I know this. So that happened to us like <laughs> so many times. Seven times an episode. So many times. And what's been happening lately is that's been happening to me in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I can't go back to sleep. Our poor heart is like, can I just keep it's my been blood? going through a lot. Yeah. It's been going through a lot. Uh, but it's okay, because now we just get to go forward. Yeah. Into the light again. And we're going to um, say... Talk about heartbreak. A happy welcome back to the yeah. listeners who dipped out for October, which, again, we support. Well, We understand and we support. I more than ever before support. <laughs> who's? I mean, yeah, because like all of them are like, what's up? Yeah. I had a great October. Yeah. It was all They're about like, pumpkin spice. And we're fall. like... I barely left my house. It's all Gilmore girls <laughs> yeah. and 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 fall candles and then we're over here with the with the jack o lanterns with no blood in our hearts. <laughs> spooky spirits. Yeah. Yeah. And nightmares. Just dead. Yeah. But we survived and um for those of you that are coming back for their and you know, it's been a month. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. We've missed yeah. you. And for those of you that are leaving, <laughs> I'm just Aww, kidding. It's Don't been leave. Fun. Don't leave. Actually, actually like they're not listening. Yeah. Yeah. They already left. Yeah. It's fine. Well, if you wanted to stay and hang out, we're pretty cool and we have a good time. And um, we can still have 
a fun time together. Yeah. Yeah. We we need to discuss. I cuz we we have said that we might do scary stories maybe like once a month on Supercast, but I feel like we need to discuss that further. Like I'm worried about you. I'm worried about me too. Like front of to be, not to sound selfish, but like can I do that? That's what I'm wondering. Can I commit to that? Do you feel like if maybe you took like a month, mm-hmm. like maybe if like just not November, we just do bounce back in December. And a little then, nightmare before Christmas. That was beautifully executed. Thank you. Um, do you feel like maybe then, because like if you think about it, all of our mind space, mm-hmm. head space, has been wrapped around like October series, mm-hmm. scary things. Mm-hmm. We've been doing like two. I like a detox for like four scary episodes a week. Mm-hmm. So maybe if like you take a minute, take a breath, then it'll be like, oh my gosh, that was a scary story, but you continue on with your life. Mm-hmm. I like I like the okay. thought of that. Also, have we taken a poll? Should we ask the people? I don't know if we took a poll. Did we? I don't believe okay, so. Okay, we'll do we'll do a poll. Um, maybe and... we'll take a poll. We'll see what people think, their thoughts, yeah. and if they say pretty please. I love how we'll we're it. saying we, but we know for By dang we. sure it's not me. We're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> We're like staring at Mandy like, should we take a poll? AKA? No, we looked at her and said, have we taken a poll? <laughs> and then she shook her head no. And we said, okay, we're going to take a poll. <laughs> but it's never us. Uh, um, if you haven't yet, this is an excellent time to uh, segue to th- the fact that you guys should check out our socials. We've been killing it on our socials. Um, and you should go <laughs> give Mandy all of the love because yes. she works so hard on our She's socials. Been, yeah. Um, so please go follow us there. We've also been doing TikToks, all the ticky talky things. Ticky-tick. So follow us there. And also if you just want to see us, follow us on YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Taryn's like, red lip right is now. crushing it today. And Thanks. I feel bad for those of you who don't get to see it. So <sighs> you should go to the YouTube link and and see Stare it for yourself. Lips. You know what? I'm gonna be just really honest right now. Hmm. Um, I was a hot mess this morning. Same. I went to the Jonas Brothers concert last night. Mm. Went a little too hard. My hyperness had so like high on reached a the level. Jonas Brothers magic. Yeah. Um. So there was a lot of head banging. There was a lot of dancing. And so I woke up this morning. I was so sore. And then I was trying to work on like editing something. And then I was like, oh my gosh, it's time to leave. And when I got in my car and looked at my face for the first time today, I had like residual makeup everywhere. Oh. So I still had like, you know when you have lipstick on and like you scrub it, but the there's lines. still. Yeah. So I, I know that it looks like I just put myself together all cute today, but I had to cover it up. <laughs> the red lip had to go back on. The red lip was like, <laughs> I'll never leave. <laughs> you will Is it wear a stain? Me. Is it a lipstick? Because apparently we're... This product is worth it if it doesn't come Oh, off. well, you know why I sell lipsticks oh. are my absolute favorite. Incredible. Highly recommend. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I'm not like a bougie brand girl, mm-hmm. but why I sell somehow the gods put me on their PR list. Mm. I don't know how I'm on it. Um, and their lipsticks are like, no joke. They stay all night mm. and they're still like creamy and like, it's just, they're amazing. I really like their concealer. The little like, the, like concealer. metal applicator. It's the perfect. It's perfect for under eyes that crease. Oh, because I, I feel like I always use like a thick like uh like thick concealer. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. Not to like slam brands, but <laughs> I'm not gonna say. I it. saw you like but, hesitate. Yeah, yeah. Like thick brand, thick concealers because my under eyes are dark and they I have a lot of like smile lines. But the YSL concealer is so thin. And I didn't realize that's what I needed. It was like almost a I less coverage it. solution. And I highly recommend that. We'll switch. Yeah. I'll have you try the concealer and I can try one of your lipsticks. Oh my gosh, that's perfect because I have a lot of like nude ones that are just like not. I'm either like no lipstick or it's like really bold mm-hmm. where you're mm-hmm. a nude girl. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll I'm only like a red lip on Christmas. You know what I Year's. love? <laughs> well, I like this one because it's like not as like vibrant red. It's kind of right. like a deeper. a deeper red. I'm I'm all about it. But I love the fact that we're talking about makeup right now. Me too. Should we change? Should we? Uh, <laughs> this is what I talk about on my YouTube so channel. Light. So I just feel so at home. I feel so comfortable here. You know what I want to try since we're talking about red lips? The Refi Red Lip Combo. Oh, I have seen. I, I actually have, like their products. I know. I have their, they have like a nudie pink, 
which is funny. We were just talking about my yeah, love nude. for nude colors. Um, they have a nudie pink lip liner that I'm obsessed with. And essentially it's the same lip liner, but red, but then they have a gloss to go over top that Ooh. looks luxurious. And I have to try it. So okay. I was actually thinking about going to Sephora this week to try to see if you I should can definitely snag do that. some. Yeah. I love I can't wait to see your 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 slow aesthetic do you TikTok mean it? of you trying it. Yes. Do you mean it though? What do you mean do I mean it? I just want to make sure that you Did you mean feel like it. that was like a slight dig? No, it sounded slightly sarcastic. No. Okay. I was just calling okay, great. just wanted to make sure. The future. Um anyways. <laughs> <laughs> uh how are you ash oh i'm i'm doing great i'm i'm recentered. yeah i went on the adventure of my life this weekend took my boyfriend and i took my parents and my sister camping that happened this weekend that happened this weekend i haven't posted oh gosh, anything about it about yet it. because i just yeah ha- I haven't. I just feel like there's so many other things to post i'm sitting on so much content too yeah. that i just like i'm tired yeah it was <laughs> so much fun for it? those of you guys that have followed me on my youtube channel for a while and actually like kind of know my parents and my sister my dad is like such an outdoorsy yeah. guy loves to camp but hasn't in forever because he's married to the the woman who hates outdoor yep. things and camping and uh, my sister's exactly the same they had a blast we oh had so much fun so my boyfriend um short synopsis boyfriend Loves camping. The most yeah. outdoorsy guy has all the camping things. So they didn't even have to bring anything. Like I was like, hey, just pack warm clothes and like, let's go. So we went out to Joshua Tree. My dad brought all his camera gear and took a bunch Cute. of photos. Stayed up till like 1 a.m. and woke up at 4 to get like cool photos of the stars. Cute. And then my mom and sister were just like such like little Lita and mom Goofy. They're very similar in their personalities. They are very similar. And they had a blast because like... Jackson and I have done it so often that we like they didn't even have to think it was one of those things where they just like show up and just had a good time and it was a blast so hopefully this is the start of uh, the McDonald family camping you know experience I love that that's (laughs) so cute it was so cute and I'm very I'll have to show you my dad's photo no I want to see he took it was this guy has been a photographer for like years but then hasn't really done anything with it for a long time and then shows up with this, the most incredible photo. And I was like, you're good. <laughs> I yeah. had no idea. He was just sitting on all this talent. Wild. You, you know what you should do? You should make him an Instagram that he doesn't even know about. Yes. And just tell him, be like, hey, send me all your photos that yeah, you take. And right. then post some. Yeah. And then I think that would be cute. Papa McDonald and Papa, stuff. Pa- oh, we'll marinate on we'll that. We'll figure out a clever yeah, yeah. name. How yeah. about you, Taryn? How was your weekend? Other than Jonas Brothers. You. I actually told you. Which That's is obviously it. That's all highlight. that matters. I got I got distracted on my own weekend and forgot that you. No, said it's Jonas totally Brothers. fine. I apologize. Uh, that was pretty much it, honestly. Yeah. I I baked. I stayed in. I watched some Halloween movies. Mm-hmm. A, a wonderful know. weekend. Yeah, wonderful weekend. Is hiring challenging? Yes. Do you love a challenge? Also, yes. You need a hiring partner that can help you rise to the challenge. You need Indeed. If you guys don't know, Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed is a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. Indeed streamlines hiring with powerful tools that can find you matched candidates. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment that they sponsor a job, according to Indeed Data US. Being a small business owner myself, one of the things I know is that hiring can be so difficult. And one of the things I love the most about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy because the candidates that you invite to apply are three times more likely to apply apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search according to US Indeed data. And of course, Indeed does all the hard work for you. Indeed shows you candidates whose resume on Indeed fit your description immediately after you post so that you can hire faster. And even better, Indeed's the only job site where you can only pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements. Indeed is an unbelievably powerful hiring platform delivering four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest 2019. So join the more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. 
Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash unsolicited. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash unsolicited. Just go to indeed.com slash unsolicited and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash unsolicited. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Well, I mean, I forget like what we do on normal episodes. (laughs) No, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to start it out with a tearing it up. No more scaring it up. No more scaring it ups. Um, So let's go ahead and get get on into it. I'm not going to say the title because it gives away the entire (laughs) email. Um, So let's go ahead and get started. Hey, ladies. Hi. Hi. If you're reading this, I know it's a cliche at this point, but I want to start off by saying how much I love your podcast. The balance between humor, support, and serious advice has helped me and entertained me a lot, and I've been a fan for about two years now. Love you both. Uh, Aw. Two years. That's, I mean, half of our shelf life, pretty much. It's a committed relationship. It is. Um, my name is Arizona and you can say my name on the pod. I love that name. No, that's so cool. It reminds me of Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Yes. But also like, I don't think I've ever met an Arizona in real life. I don't know that I have. I don't actually, I know that I haven't. It's a cool name. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw this TikTok the other day where these two girls were doing words that would be sound cool as names if they weren't already associated with, with what they were. Mm-hmm. And I was literally dying because like one of the girls was was like ovary and it was just like (laughs) they both would just like crack up but you you also are trying to like try to dissociate like the meaning and Mm -hmm. actually just listen to like the sound of the word and be like well i guess it it sounds pretty but it just was every time i think of the word spatula spatula i'm like what yeah who did that spat who thought of that yeah why is it such a complicated word to say for such a like simple thing yeah you know, I don't, I don't know. know, man. I don't know. Zena. Okay, back to the back to the email. <laughs> um, they write or Arizona writes. Okay, on to the tearing it up. This happened a few days ago, and though it was so awful at the moment, I knew I just had to share it with you guys. Ugh, I love that we were your first thought. Y- your first thought. Yep. I want to start with some background info. About a week ago, I got into a car accident. I walked away from it with a totaled car and a pretty severe concussion. Jeez. My mom got in a car accident. Last Thursday. What? Why am I just hearing about this? I didn't. Honestly, I forgot. <laughs> Is she okay? She's fine. She got rear-ended, but her car's totaled. Oh, my god! Apparently, the guy behind her, he says he fell asleep, but it sounds like he was on his phone. So, he was going decently fast, and she's totally fine. But, oh yeah. total my total her car. to text her. Yeah. Sorry, she Michaela, I'm going to get red all over this mic. I'm so sorry. I've already like kissed it twice. Oh, well, because we're in our old studio. Yes. If you're not watching YouTube or you I haven't seen on Insta. Here. I kind of do too. I feel like it's bright. It feels brighter yeah. in a good way. And it's like, uh, what's it called? Nostalgic now. Very nostalgic now. Um, but yes. we we're having some issues. So we're back in the studio and I'm not used to this Where mic. Is. Yeah. So I keep kissing it on accident. Sorry, Michaela. All right. So background info. She got into a car accident about a week ago. She writes, I walked away from it with a totaled car and a pretty severe concussion. There are a lot of side effects to concussions, but most of the time, the symptoms are the worst the few days after. I'm a full-time college student, and I go to school about an hour away from where me and my boyfriend live. He works and isn't able to drive me there from classes. So since I don't have a car right now, I've been taking the public bus to my classes. This is a bus ride of a little over an hour, and it is super bumpy. So rewind (laughs) to the first day back to class with my concussion. It had been a long day on campus. I didn't bring much food along with me, so all I ate throughout my three classes were a peach, a granola bar, and a large iced coffee. It's not enough. It's not enough for me. You know, like the... um I feel like we've been doing this long enough. There's like trigger words when you're reading a tearing it up that I'm like, she's going to pee herself. She's going to puke. She's going to, you know what I mean? So like, I feel like you just read a sentence. I was like, setting it up. Yeah. Oh God, it's coming. (laughs) She writes, I'm exhausted and starving by my third class and the concussion isn't helping. It's hot. The lights are bright. My head is throbbing with a migraine. 
About halfway through class, I start to feel sick and I start to feel weak. Uh This can be a symptom of concussions, so I wasn't too concerned. I just sipped on my water, but it only started to get worse and worse. 15 minutes later, I'm positive I'm about to vomit, so I quickly stand up and run to the door. My professor, a sweet old man, is standing by the door, and he kindly opens it for me. Just as I start to nod a silent thanks, I feel it. Oh, gosh. And it starts. (laughs) And I begin to vomit. I lean forward, and so does my professor. He panics, eyes wide, as I throw up all over his shoes. Oh, no. He was probably like... Sweet old man professor, and in front of the entire class. That's my... That's this... That's the hardest part for me. It's I've never, if I'm going to be sick, it's not like the end of the world. It's like being sick in public. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just the cherry on top to like, I don't need this right now. Just I just want to be yeah. in a stall in the bathroom by myself, you know? Yeah. Because I mean, it's rare. I've only experienced a couple times where it was like, I like woke up and was like, oh my gosh. And like had to sprint and like barely yeah. made it to the toilet. Usually like. I feel it coming on. I have enough time to like try to avoid it or like, yeah, you know what my, cause I've, I've been having like issues with, I think a medication I'm on, but, um, I have a fan mm. by my toilet. And so like, I'll go in the bathroom and it's like dark, you know, cause it's like in the middle of the night and I'll just kind of like fan myself mm-hmm. and it works like a charm. Really? Every single time I do that, I end up being able to just like take a Tums yeah. and go lay back down propped. With yeah. some pillows. Especially if she was kind of car sick from the bus ride. Well, concussion makes, I mean, usually that's like one of the symptoms. Like, yeah. So she probably was like not in control of yeah. that. But yeah. on top of that, empty stomach, yeah. car ride, lots of coffee. Ouch. Not great. Mr. Jones. <laughs> um, it got all cleaned up. This poor old man was so kind. And I started apologizing before running to the bathroom to sit until I felt better. I don't get embarrassed easily, but that about did it for me. And the cherry on top. I got on the bus and the ride made it so much worse the entire way home. Feel free to laugh at my suffering. It was disgusting and embarrassing, but no one's mentioned anything. Thank God. And that's it, girls. That's so rough. I'm so sorry. I lied. I do. I feel like you remember the story. Do you remember about the time I? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I just sniffed so loud in the microphone. (laughs) My nose is itchy. Everybody sniff. Get out. I lied. Do you remember the story of when I was on the missions trip to Jamaica and I threw up? I was literally sitting by. No. I never told you this. I I don't think so. Yeah, I was in. I think we were in. We were in Jamaica and we were like playing music different places and like we would do. I was in. I think I was in. I had just got out of high school, so I was on staff for, like, high school. And I was sitting in the bus, and I started – my stomach started hurting. There was no air conditioning. I was feeling claustrophobic, and, like, I started feeling nauseous. And he started telling these stories about, like, how someone had gotten sick on a bus, and it was, Uh -uh. like, like flowing down the middle. And he's talking, and I'm just, like, Taryn – literally, I was, like, Taryn – hold it together i can't i'm not gonna say who this person is but just know like ash can vouch like it's probably one of like the top most embarrassing people you could like do this in front of and so i'm sitting there and then all of a sudden i couldn't hold it and i literally just puked all over myself and then i just started crying we were like stranded somewhere all stuck in a bus and i didn't i was fighting it so hard and then by the time it happened i just like didn't have time And so I literally just threw up all over myself. Oof. He stopped talking. He was like, oh, and then I just started sobbing hysterically and just yeah. put my head against the window and was like, I just buried myself in my body because yeah. I was like so embarrassed. Isn't that the worst? Yeah. Oof. I feel like, yeah, that's the absolute worst. I've had a couple instances this last year. I don't know if this is something about like being 30 now, but I have a sensitive stomach. I've always had a sensitive stomach, but like I've thrown up randomly multiple times this past year on a flight just because I ate something weird. Well, you got really sick the last yeah. couple of times like, you There's traveled. been like a few yeah. really weird moments where I've thrown up and been completely fine. Never happened to me before. And it's just the worst feeling. Yeah. And I, 
inevitably like I always cry for a little bit after just because I'm so frustrated and yeah. I feel so gross that yeah. I just can't I just start crying yeah <laughs> I'm just you like, do <laughs> I do I always I always, it's just it's the worst it's the world's worst feeling and it, really it sucks is. so bad when you're in it and every time it's not like a hysterical cry but just like a few tears yeah, will fall down just a few tears and I'll just be like I hate this right now yep. and then it's done yep it's the that's worst. it but thank you so much for sharing if you guys have a funny uh, in class tearing it up you should absolutely send it in oh absolutely okay um we're gonna jump into <laughs> guys normal story Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. okay this one is titled my boyfriend's self-esteem issues oh <laughs> i let she starts with anonymous please <laughs> yeah. i love i love when you guys do that because i without fail forget every time okay dear ash and taryn I would like to stay anonymous, but you can know my name. It's. Ooh, that's funny. That's a cool name. If you can believe that, Michaela. First of all, I have to say, I love the podcast so much. It literally got me through COVID and my A levels, which is final year of high school. Where is she from? I wonder. I've never heard of that. A levels. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I don't know what that is either. Okay. Which went well. Um, by the way, and then she puts A, 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 A (laughs) again. I don't know what that means, but congratulations. I know. I'm assuming that's amazing by your enthusiasm. I just keep hearing AAA. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like batteries. (laughs) As an 18 year old, I look up to you both and want to be as cool as you when I'm older. Honored. 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 We're role models. It's hard work to get here. Just a warning. It really is. Yeah. (laughs) I still don't feel like an adult. I could write a lot more on how much I love you, but I'm going to get into the story. For a little backstory, me and my boyfriend started talking in January this year and made it official three months ago. We're both in the same friend group and met when I joined the school two years ago. I'm going to uni in a different city and he's taking a gap year in We both go to school slash uni in the UK. Oh, okay. Well... That's where she got it. (laughs) Dear God. (laughs) Starting in November. We've decided to stay together over it. So hope it goes well. I'm an Enneagram two and I think he's either a four or five. I haven't made him take the test yet. (laughs) I love how she guesses. I guess on people all the time. We've been doing long distance for the past month because I left the UK to go back to my family, but I'm returning to see him soon. Left the UK to go back. I'm girl, you sound like you're like all over the country so that's awesome the issue during the time we've been together it's come to my attention that he's not comfortable in his body he's a rugby lad and describes himself as having a prop build so slightly on the larger side never heard of that but prop build like prop prop build like proper Proper no prop build prop I don't know what that means. Um, if you guys know, let us know. I'm feeling very uncultured right now. I know. I'm like trying to think of what I was like. Prop, prop. I'm like what the crap is the triple A? <laughs> Immediately, I just prop. go to like like a movie film set. Yeah. Prop. She says on the larger side, and he's a rugby player. So I'm picturing like, like a, a linebacker. linebacker. Yeah. yeah. Close. <laughs> Tried. But lineman. I mean, that's you can say that too. Okay. So not close. No, you got Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. I love how you first answered, okay, like you were mad at me. And then you're like, wait, she's supporting me. Wait, what? Did you feel that switch? You were like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I'm right. (laughs) You know what I mean? I was like, okay. Oh, you looked mad. But in my mind, you were like, you thought I was um, insulting you. And then you're like, oh, she's telling me I got it right. (laughs) Anyways. Okay. He spends a lot of time in the gym and cares about what he looks like and sometimes worries me whether he's being healthy with losing weight or not. I love him so much and honestly couldn't care less on how, about how he looks. Here comes the issue. As myself, I already find it hard to compliment people as it is. I know what I find attractive in him and that's his humor, how kind he is, his freckles, his eyes, and his cute grin when he's about to say something stupid, just to name a few. I love that. I know that was really I love cute. Love. <laughs> but I don't know how to phrase it. I'm also not sure how to bring up the fact that I'm concerned about him losing weight in an unhealthy way. Every time I try, he tries to brush it off and says not to worry about him because I'm going through my own issues. 
He's been so helpful in supporting me through my family issues, and I want to support him, but I just don't know how. If you read this, thank you so much. Even if it's not read on the pod, I'm still very excited you read it. Hope you have a stunning rest of your day. I did attach a couple pictures from prom and one of my favorite ones of us because I know you love photos. Thanks again. Love, Anonymous. Um, so I'm gonna, oh, well, I should have just showed this photo so we could see. Yeah, he looks like an athlete. I can't, can you turn oh, it more? Sorry. There's a glare. Yeah. Yeah. So like definitely like football he player. Just, yeah, he looks like uh, sturdy. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right adjective. Um, and then she also sent a follow-up one that says, quick side note to clarify some things. He's never mean when he brushes it off. Because I thought that at yeah. first. Yeah. Um, the way that it was written. Or makes me feel bad. It's in the way of I worry about you, but you don't need to worry about me. Which that makes sense. If it's like a... She says she's going through family stuff. He's like, hey, like, don't worry about me. I'm worried about you. Just, like, focus on yourself. And, like, Mm -hmm. I got my own issues, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it, too, I don't think it is common. We've touched on this on another episode. I don't think it's common for men to talk about being insecure about their body. It's not common. It's not safe for them to do that, I feel like. It's not common at all. So obviously creating visual content is an essential part of what me and Taryn do, not only here on the podcast, but as a job on socials. But the creative process has not always been easy. I've been very open and honest with you guys. When we first started this podcast, we had no idea what we were doing. Creating social content, creating posts around the podcast was kind of a daunting thing for us. And obviously we didn't know what we were doing and we were so grateful when we found Canva. Ever since Taryn and I discovered Canva for Teams, life has gotten so much easier here for our team at Unsolicited Advice. It has been easy to collaborate and design with our team, which makes the whole process so much more fun and creative. If you guys don't know, Canva for Teams is a design platform that makes it easy for anyone to create stunning content in any format, from social media posts to videos, presentations, and websites. The endless templates and premium fonts, photos, graphics, and videos add personality and edge to our team's content. With features designed for brand consistency, Canva for Teams makes it easy to maintain your aesthetic and add your logos, fonts, and colors to anything you create. Canva for Teams streamlines how we do social media too. We can plan, create, and share social media content directly to all of our channels, all from one place, and even schedule posts ahead of time, which guys is such a lifesaver if you haven't tried that before. And Canva for Teams also has a video editor that is so user-friendly with tons of filters, animations, and transitions that'll bring your group's content to life. And Canva for Teams enables you to take your presentation to the next level with professionally designed presentation templates. Plus, their remote control feature means you can virtually connect and navigate slides from absolutely any device, which is so nice and convenient. So collaborate with Canva for Teams. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you go to canva.me slash advice. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash advice, A-D-V-I-C-E, for a free 45-day extended trial canva.me slash advice I agree I feel like guys don't talk about this I feel like it's a well-known fact guys just aren't vulnerable in that way but you know who is and who's starting like a movement about it Justin Baldoni oh I love him I've seen multiple interviews multiple podcasts where he's been doing like speaking specifically to guys on what it's like to be a man and what it means to be like vulnerable, not only like in the family and as a father and as a husband, but like just with yourself. And I would, I would start maybe listening to that together. I think, I don't know if it's a book or if this is just him doing like a speaking series on like um, stepping up as a man and what that looks like, but it includes a lot of vulnerability and I just adore him as a human being. And I think he's doing a really great job of like, talking to men as a man and just being like hey like this is important for you and this is what it means to be a man is being able to like show your kids how to be vulnerable too and be vulnerable with your wife and like all of these really cool things so one I would just suggest that as a tool for you guys to be able to like get um just some just some tools to use in your relationship and maybe even just for him to listen to on his own you know you don't have to do homework together or make it a big thing but just maybe something for him to listen to yeah um, and something I would suggest, 
being someone that I think struggles and has gone back and forth with like healthy weight loss and unhealthy weight loss, I think there are or is nothing wrong in like looking up and Googling like how to compliment your spouse if you don't know how to compliment. Like if you struggle with that, I know compliments mean a lot to me, whether I'm in a good place or when I'm in a bad place. And if my partner was in that place or if if I was in that place and my partner went out of their way to every day give me a little compliment in some way that would mean the world to me yeah and so if that's something that you struggle with there is nothing wrong with googling fun cute unique ways to compliment your partner on their physical appearance on their um personality on their talents like and you can switch it up it doesn't always have to be physical or focused around physical but google it I would make a whole list on my notes Yeah, and I would check it every day and I would just start going down and making sure he knows that I am obsessed with him and everything about him. Well, it's funny because you're like, I don't know how to compliment him, but yet like all of the things you wrote on that list were like perfect. You did it so well. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's important to remember that no, like we're not telepathic. We don't know what other people are thinking. Mm-hmm. You can't, you can't like... In any relationship, in friendships, in romantic relationships with your family, you can't just be like, oh, well, I told them I love them that one time five months ago. Yeah. Like, don't you, you know? have to, like, us as humans, we crave connection. We crave, um, you know, those little moments where someone tells you how much you mean to them. Mm-hmm. And if you starve a person of that, and they are feeling insecure in general, it's gonna, it's gonna just kind of like, they're going to feed off of each other. So I think what you need to do is get used to in the moment when you feel something. So like you mentioned, my favorite part was like the cute little face he makes before he's about to say Mm -hmm. something funny. Like you don't have to make it this big elaborate, like I love the way your face does this right before you say something funny. Like you can, but you can just be like, while he says something and you're looking at him, just smile at him and be like, you're so cute. Yeah. And then like move on, you know? Yeah. What I think the practice is, is getting used to creating a bridge between what you think and like putting it out into the world. Mm-hmm. And I think men specifically, I saw, have you seen that TikTok? It, it was going around um, like a while ago, but it was like a, a man, I think he was like a FedEx or like a postal driver and he walked into a place to deliver a package and the woman told him she was like you know i just read or she said something like you are you have beautiful eyes or like you're really a beautiful person or something like complimented him Mm -hmm. and then he stopped and was just like oh my gosh thank you and then she told him you know i read an article that men have said that they don't ever get compliments And I was thinking about it. I'm like, that is so true. Like, when's the last time, like, you just walked up to a random man and were like, oh, I love your shirt. Like, I'll do that to a random girl. True. Or how true is it if you are a female walking into a friend group of females, how do you do it? What's the easiest go-to thing? You compliment them on their shirt, their makeup, their hair. Oh, my God. I love your fit today. Or, oh, my God. Like, you look so pretty. How'd you do? You know, like, it's always you start with a compliment. It's like your eyes are stunning. You're this. Unspoken Mm -hmm. rule in girl world is if you want a a girl that you don't know to be friends with you, compliment them. Yeah. It's such an easy thing. Even, like, whether it's to make, like, a social... Uh, encounter easier or anything like I think it just comes more natural Mm -hmm. and men don't receive compliments the way that like women do and so she he said basically how much that meant to him and how that like in that moment it just like gassed him up so much and he was just like so appreciative of it so I think I think it's an overall thing that men struggle with their own insecurities, but they'll never voice it. Like imagine Mm -hmm. a man going into a group of his friends and being like, guys, I feel fat today. Like Mm -hmm. I guarantee you that's going to be met with laughing. Like, you know what I mean? Just like joking around. And then that guy's going to be like, Oh, Oh, period. Yeah, Yeah. 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 So I just feel like if, if he's already in an insecure place, gassing him up, just have it be more natural where if you have a thought say it out loud like it doesn't have to be this big thing but just if he walks in just be like 
oh, you look so good today. Or yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'm so lucky you're my man. Or like, yeah. whatever, you know? Yeah, something I feel like I've got, I'm really good at with um, in my relationship is, is I do this all the time. And it is kind of a copy paste, same thing over and over again. But he'll be telling me something and I'll just be like, sorry, I got distracted because you're so hot. And I'll just say some, something off the wall like that, even yeah. though I'm paying attention. Or I'll call him hot stuff out of nowhere just because... Just because, yeah. just because I do think he's hot or like, I'll just, I think something that like is that I've gotten really good at is being like, you know what I appreciate about you? And it could be dumb, but like fill in the blank and I'll yeah. just, I'll, it's like, it's out of the wall. We're not necessarily talking about it specifically, but it popped in your head, but it popped in my head yep. and I've gotten good at instead of making it a whole thing, I'll just, just say it quick little sideline and then back to whatever, like yep. we'll be eating pizza and I'll be like, you know what I appreciate about you? Boom. Yep. There it is. Yeah. I feel like the compliment doesn't have to be this huge monologue. No, yeah. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I think, you know, if if he makes a comment or says something that you're like, ooh, that sounded like he's being harsh on himself, it's okay to, like, bring that up later and be like, hey, like, I just wanted to talk to you about, like, you said this comment, and it, mm-hmm. it made me sad because I view you as, like, you're perfect in my eyes. And I just wanted to check in, like, have you been struggling with that? Is there a way that I can support you? Yeah. And then kind of like let him tell you what he needs in that moment. Um, And then also you mentioned like being concerned about him doing something in an unhealthy way. Um, If you bring it up and he brushes it aside, I think it's just in those moments, not stopping him, but just being like, Hey, I appreciate that you care about me, but right now, I'm caring about you and I want to talk about this mm-hmm. like and kind of pushing through it. So yeah. um, I know as a two, sometimes you can get too led by like other people's lead, but I think it's okay to like go into a conversation with an agenda and be like, I'm not going to let him brush this aside. Like I want to talk to him about this mm-hmm. and make sure he's okay. Um, but girl, just let that mind go, like mm-hmm. connect that mind to that mouth and let it just let it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And he'll appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He will. He will. Oh, cute. I've missed regular episodes. I know. Me too. Helping people, making a difference. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) On to the next one. This one is mine. This one is titled, Are My Career Ambitions Ruining Us? Ooh. Hmm. I mean, maybe. Possibly. Hello, ladies. Deciding whose name to put first stressed me out too much, so this is what I had to settle on. So Um, sorry. (laughs) Let me just start off with the regularly scheduled program. You two are awesome, and I am obsessed with this lovely community you've built with your podcast. I'm a day one listener and love to spend my time catching up on episodes and listening to you two. You feel like the older sisters I never had, and I love it. Wow, a day oneer. We love day oneers. Day oneer. She writes, I would like to remain anonymous, but for the two of you, you can know my name, and it is bleep it, Michaela. And I am an Enneagram 9 wing one, I think. She puts, hey, Ash, hey, girl, or that means yeah, we're the same. Literally, yeah. She writes, I am 20 and starting my junior year studying engineering at Michigan State University. I have lived in Michigan my entire life, tiny town, Hicksville, raised, and had the opportunity to study abroad in Europe for two months this past summer. I promise this information is important. My boyfriend, we'll call him James, and I have been together for four years now. He's 21, and we've been medium distance the entire time. In high school, we were an hour away from each other, and the furthest we've been is about three hours away when I was at school. James recently started a new career path of becoming a cop. This requires him to stay working in the city for at least five consecutive years once he finishes his training. I have absolutely no problem with this. Even though we're young, we've been seriously talking about our future for quite some time now, and I truly feel that he is my person. Yeah, four years is a good time. That's yeah, a good that's amount, a of time. amount of time. You sh- it makes sense that you're talking about that. I don't despise the thought of living in this city or even settling down here once we're married. It's close to home and a great area. We've even talked about compromises on locations. We could live where we could live and how far each of us would be willing to commute depending on where I decide to work after graduation. 
However, my career ambitions are quite limiting. Although I'm going into engineering, I have fallen in love with the food industry, specifically production, over the course of my past couple internships. There are very limited places within the area that would be in my line of interest to work at, but the problem isn't for something long term. Now that a new school year is starting, I only have one more summer left to explore my options before I lock down my first out of college job. I've started a rigorous internship hunt. However, most of the places I'm interested in would be out of state, which I'm fine with. The issue lies with James. This past summer when I was abroad, James and I struggled to remain our normal selves in our relationship. When I returned, he expressed his harsh feelings that he doesn't want to go through something like that again, referring to not seeing each other for two months and experiencing hardcore long distance. Since I'm looking for a new career adventure for this upcoming summer, James is encouraging me to explore closer options to home, meaning within the state of Michigan. He claims that he will not be able to handle having me out of state for the summer under any circumstances. We've had a couple serious conversations about this, but I feel like he's not hearing me out. This would be strictly temporary, three to four months gone during the summer and under the assumption that he could come visit me and I could maybe even come home a little bit. I have no intentions as of right now to accept a permanent job out of state once I graduate. This is just to gain more experience and go somewhere different company-wise. My past three internships have been with the same company in James's hometown. In other words, I'm itching to try something new. I also think it would be a great way to expand my skills and experience in the professional setting. And I just can't stop feeling that James is going to leave me if I choose to go out of state. I've previously thought that we can get through anything, but he has some very strong feelings on this topic, and I'm afraid I won't be able to sway him when it's time. I know that this is something I should pursue, my dreams, despite his feelings, but I truly believe that we belong together, and I know that doesn't mean that we won't find each other again or be able to make things work. I also refuse to let him hold me back in my career just because he refuses to see things from my perspective on this issue. You know, girl bossing and all that. But again, I don't want to give up knowing that there's something here to fight for. We've always had different views on dreams, careers, and ambitions on pursuing your future. He comes from an upbringing where he watched and still is watching his four older siblings go to college, drop out, change career paths several times, and royally F up their lives for the past 15 years or so. He doesn't view his future like I do, and he never gives himself enough credit, but I don't know how to help him see things the way that I do. So question, how do we approach this conversation as adults? How do I help him see my perspective without making him think I'm leaving him for good and that this is not a permanent gig? Do I even address this because I don't even have any interviews lined up? How do I not feel like I'm keeping a secret from him when I'm entering the thought that I'll be out of state this coming summer? when I'm entertaining the thought that I'll be out of state this coming summer. I don't want to not consider being out of state this summer. So how do I break this to him easily? I'm sorry if this was long, confusing or messy. If this is being read on the pod, thank you so much for listening and giving me the much needed guidance. Anonymous. Woof, woof, woof. Woof, 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 Um, indeed. I honestly, I have like so many thoughts. Um... Okay, I'm just gonna like rattle a couple of things yeah, off yeah, go for that it. off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. One is, I don't think, I don't think you need to have this massive conversation if you're not even sure you're going. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of work for nothing. Um, I know I get what she means about she feels like she's like keeping something for him if she's applying out of state, but I feel like you've already expressed to him that that's an interest you have. So I don't think it's lying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. But for me, I'm like, you guys could literally get in this huge fight that ends your relationship. And then what if you say, but then there's also that part of like, I don't know. I have, mm-hmm. I have I'm like swirling. Um, I know you've been together for a very long time, but I, I do think like you have to at least acknowledge that you are still very young. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I, I think that this is such a this is such a hard topic because I feel like people can get very passionate about a bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. 
But I think that it solely comes to you and your relationship. 100%. I think that I've seen people who took an approach of like, we're going to think about the relationship first and our dreams, they took kind of turns in life, sacrificing. Like one kind of pursued their goals while the other one kind of just like followed that along. And then there was like years later where then that person put stuff on hold so the other person could. So I've seen it done in ways where it was like, relationship first our goals will like take turns pursuing different times um i do think that he has a right whether i think it's right or wrong he does have a right to put his foot down on if he's willing to do long distance or not because some people can. some people some people cannot do that and you know then pe- i feel like people get to like oh well if he can't do two months without you like are you guys really meant to be and I feel like that's a little unfair because we don't know what he's going through and like how that felt to him if Mm -hmm. he felt literally like abandoned and it was like torture so I think that's his decision yeah there's people out there that could not date someone in the service because they can't even they can't fathom the thought of having to do long distance like that yeah or like worried about their safety it's not gonna work because they know themselves that well I think what's hard is you guys have built that foundation. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a conversation that needs to be had. And just like if he decides to put his foot down, he's risking the future that you guys have. Mm -hmm. Same for you, though. Like if you decide to like pursue your career, which you have every right to, you do have to basically deal with the fact that you could lose him. Yeah. And it's just it's such a crappy situation overall. But. I feel like just from hearing you talk, if you stay for him, you will resent him. Like, I I feel like that's so clear. Yeah. I think there's two very obvious things here. He won't do long distance. He's made that very clear. And you will not put your life on hold for him. Yeah. That's very clear. I think what needs to happen is I almost want you to just like not give him this podcast since we're reading your email and haven't listened to it, but almost read your email to us to him I felt like yeah. the way you worded everything your love for him um, your work ethic his work ethic how you guys grew up your relationship together for the past four years really shows perspective and shows that you're willing to to put in work for the relationship and I think that's all he would want to hear before having some kind of conversation I will go ahead and say um, obvious not to sound like a 30 like a a 33 year old yeah speaking to a 20 year old but you have so much of your life still yeah yeah um and now that that's out of the way I do think I do think it is important to have this conversation now instead of waiting for it to come around because it sounds like it bothers you that he's thinking this way and that he doesn't want you to leave him so I feel like you need to almost have this like Hey, babe, let's do a little scenario situation. If I got this job and it means that I could find my dream career and support our family in the future, like, would you really not be able to do two months? If I did get maybe even a four month thing, what can we negotiate to make it work? Like, is it every two weeks I come out, you come out, I come out, you come out? Do we go back and forth like that? Like, can we negotiate this in some way? Like, are you even open to it? See what he has to say. And then like, I think I would just play little scenarios like that to kind of get a feel for how he's feeling. And if in the end you're feeling frustrated and that he's like taking away and dumbing down this huge opportunity for you, then maybe it's time for a different type of conversation. Yeah. But I think he has the right to, to uh, what's the word? Navigate that conversation with you before, something serious does present itself with an opportunity to like go travel somewhere yeah. and, and learn. So you're way. saying to have the conversation. I no think definitely what. have the yeah. conversation because I, I feel you've like been I'm... dating for four years. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. either going to, this is either going to work or not. It's not like it's too early to have this conversation. You should be having this conversation. Yeah. I still am going to stick with my, I wouldn't have it till I know just cause I feel like for me, if like say my deal breaker is, um, I don't know how to make a parallel, but say like um, my deal breaker is I won't date someone who doesn't want to have kids. Mm -hmm. I feel like then if that person comes to me and is like, well, we need to talk about the fact that like I don't want to have kids, but then that ends up not happening. 
like I feel like that fight would end our relationship when it's not relevant if it does you know what I mean that's a bad parallel but I just feel like if he's really triggered by you leaving mm -hmm. and then you're not going to end up leaving I just think I don't I don't know if it's worth doing it but I love that we have differing opinions because no, no, we no, never yeah do. I'm trying to understand and the only the only thing I'll say too is I'll play devil's advocate for him I could see him being like okay she already like we already did this long distance uh, we struggled so much. I'm sure when when you guys got back together, there were conversations had of like, I never want to do that again. Oh my gosh, me neither. That was terrible. Like, yeah. thank God we never have to do that again. And then now all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, actually, like, there's nothing in this area. I need to go do something like mm -hmm. for the summer. So I bet in his mind he's like, okay, but when is this going to like end? Yeah. Because then what if you do this internship they offer you your dream job or you come back and you're like, well, there's actually no opportunities here. So I'm I'm just going to do a year somewhere else to him. He might in his mind be like, this is like never ending. Yeah. And I feel like you need to reflect with yourself. What are the, like, is that a possibility? Because if right now I think it's easy to be like, oh, but it's just for the summer. That's it. But like, what if you do get offered your dream job in this other state? Like, are you open to that? Because I think he has a right to know that too. And I think you need to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. because what if you do that and you're like, hey, no, I'm commit, I'm fully committing. Like it's just this summer. Let's talk about it. Let's make it work. But then this comes up again. Like that's, it's just going to be a cycle that I think is going to be damaging for both of you. Mm -hmm. So I think you really need to sit and reflect like and be honest with yourself about how much you're willing to like commit to something or not. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? That's kind of what I mean is I, I think she does want to. I think she well, does want she to said, travel. She said that it's just the summer like for sure. And he doesn't understand that. So I'm just saying if you're going to yeah. throw those statements out like you need to be sure that you mean it because if this cycle keeps happening, like mm -hmm. it is going to be the end of your relationship. Yeah. If it doesn't already like come to that, you know? Yeah. Ugh. This makes my stomach hurt. It's, it's definitely a bummer, but at four years, you're, you're you have to start talking about this at some point, you know, like you got to start playing these scenarios, got to start thinking this way at some point. Like if, are you going to just, are you planning, do you want to stay in Michigan for the rest of your life? Like not necessarily that rest of your life, but like the foreseeable future. Cause that's what he wants. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Clearly. Like, I really think you need to sit on that. Yeah. Like you got to sit on that. And it sounds to me like she wants the experience. She wants to try a bunch of new things. So anyways, all that to say, because it sounds like you guys have different values in pursuing your dreams in that way. I person, I think you should have the conversation because we got to figure it out. Yeah. Otherwise we're going to get to year six and possibly have resentment or, you know, no, for and sure. it would just be nice. Like, even if you, even if it worked and you didn't actually leave anywhere, it would be nice to know that your partner and life partner would be like, Hey, that sucks. I don't want to do it, but like, we'll figure it out or know that he's not a long distance guy moving forward. Like it's not going to work. And I can't say yes to long to yeah far jobs you know it's just good to get like a good yeah. grip on like what where we stand on that yeah but I I do I do think you've got to reflect and figure out where your line is because mm. that's that's just hard you just got to be honest with yourself and if you do see yourself like going and you see yourself like going for opportunities mm -hmm. then I think you have to also be prepared for like what could come with that and that's okay if you choose your career yeah like everyone has a right to choose what they want but it's also okay that he chooses to not like do long pursue distance. the relationship yeah, yeah. there's there so is a such risk. thing as it's a, a healthy risk. break like a, a clean break and then yeah. you know reevaluate after people do that yeah um lots of options to consider but I think the way you worded it in the email is how you should talk to him. I would yeah. literally just write it out and just be like, here's how I'm feeling. Here's all my thoughts. To be clear, I love you. I want to pursue a future with you. I would love to work this out. But my brain's a, a mix of emotions right now. Yeah. And I would love to sort this out with you. It's just to make it clear that he's included in this. And you're not trying. You're not making a decision without him. You're not leaving him. You're not wanting to be stuck either. You're just wanting to be heard. And you're wanting to make a plan together. As long as you emphasize the togetherness, I feel like he'll be like, all right, 
Like, let's talk about it. Yeah. And I mean, I would, if I was having that conversation, um, I would be like, hey, I'm I'm not saying that I don't love you, but like I am going to do this job this summer mm -hmm. and I would like us to come up with a plan together and I'm committing to whatever you feel comfortable with, whether yeah. it's we have to be like with each other for like a full yeah. weekend every night every Skype month date. like you know what or FaceTime. Yeah. And then I would I would end the conversation with. If you can't do that, you're going to have to break up with me because I'm not breaking up with you. Yeah. I don't want this to end. So you're yeah. going to have to end. <laughs> a four month internship will not yeah. end this relationship for me. Yeah. Make that point clear. Let yeah. him decide the rest. I think that's Ugh. great. Good luck. Good luck. Whatever whatever you choose, again, um, I think just you got to sit and reflect, mm -hmm. figure out what you want, and then whether you decide to approach the topic before you know you have something or after either way I think you have a lot of like self-reflection and 100%. you should be like talking to other people in your life I hope you are 100%. like you should be sitting yes. with your friends doing pros cons talking about like tell them to ask you like everything like okay well what happens of this what happens of that and like yeah. really let your mind go to those places because I think he deserves to know where you stand mm -hmm. on stuff but please update us yeah would love to know <sighs> also, maybe suggest he write in so we can hear his side. <laughs> yeah, would love also, to hear like, his side. I th I'm uh, we're all about writing letters on UA. So if you feel like he's not understanding you or you're not able to like fully get out what you mean in conversations, I think there's nothing wrong with like writing out a letter and just being like, "Hey, I hope like I spent a lot of time with this. Like, please reflect on this and then let me know how you feel." But I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. So if you're not feeling mm -hmm. heard. Love it. Thanks for writing Oof. in, guys. If you have any stories on long distance, um, send them in. Yeah. We take all them the too. Okay. What do you call it when Batman skips church? Do you hear my throat <laughs> yeah. right now? Yeah. Excuse me. Skips church. I'm thinking of all the villains in Batman. I can't think of any. I don't know. Christian Bale. Can I Damn like, it. Christian That's so Bale. good. Christian Bale. That's so good. Brilliant. Guys, guys, guys. If you made it to the dad joke, we love you the mostest. Um, wow. Did you miss you saying that? so much for listening to today's episode. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube, and is that it? I don't know. Supercast? Supercast. <laughs> we have a Supercast uh, subscription service where you can get more of us if you're not bored of us. Ooh. That was a rhyme. Good job, Ash. That was really good. Killed uh, it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all. That's all I got. Cool. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.